Throughout its existence, Darkroom has been like this canal. Beautiful, straightforward, easy to navigate. A romantic throwback to a bygone era. But as productive and as efficient as Darkroom is, every so often you would come up against a barrier. A feature that you want that isn't there. But don't worry, because Berg & Co, they listen and then they fix, they update and they elevate their app, all while keeping the core of what Darkroom is consistent, which is very important. And this brings me on to the biggest feature in Darkroom's most recent update, the ability to cull. In photography, culling is where you go through all of your photos and separate the good from the bad, the bangers from the trash. It's an extremely important part of many photographers' workflow, including mine. And yes, Darkroom is late to this party, but it's here now. And if it works, if Berg & Co have implemented it in the right way, that intuitive and beautiful Darkroom way, then this update should be one of the most important in the app's history. So with the new update installed, when you open up Darkroom on your iPhone, you'll notice it looks exactly the same as before until you open an image because now in the bottom left hand corner, there's this little arrow that'll take you through to the flag and reject options. And here with just a single tap, you can either approve or reject the current photo and Darkroom will automatically move on. Pretty cool. And I've got to be honest, I've really been waiting for this. I haven't been to sleep in two days, so I'm a pretty much a zombie right now, if, if you can't tell, but, but this makes me smile. This gets me animated, <laughs> as animated as I can be. <laughs> Once you finish calling, when you go back to the library view, Darkroom will then prompt you to instantly delete all of your rejects. Or if you want to review your called photos instead, you can go to the new flagged and rejected folders where you can easily change your mind or delete. But it gets better because you can also cull multiple photos at once thanks to Darkroom's new and improved batching. Just swipe your finger across a photo to activate it and the selection behaves as you'd expect. You can add to it, retract it, or just choose and remove individuals. Then just tap flag or reject and Darkroom will respond accordingly. Now, if you're like me and you want to do a bit of culling here on your iPhone, but you'd rather make edits on a different device, you can just close Darkroom on the iPhone and then open it again later on your iPad or your Mac and your flagged and rejected selections should be there. And I say should because Darkroom is at the mercy of iCloud. Sometimes my iPhone will decide that it doesn't want to update my iCloud photo library because it wants to save battery or something. So I have to prompt it. And that's calling in Darkroom on the iPhone. Very simple, very easy to do, completely one-handed. Now let's pick up on the iPad. Traditionally, my favorite device to use Darkroom and in vertical orientation, it's exactly the same as the iPhone. And importantly, you don't need to wait for images to download from iCloud, which is great as that would really slow things down, especially when calling through lots of 30 plus megabyte Pro RAW files. Horizontally though, things are a little different. Here, the flag and reject icons are off to the side, and I recommend keeping the strip of photos open on the left hand side, because in this view, Darkroom won't automatically advance to the next photo, and the strip gives you a little confirmation of your choice. Finally, like before, Darkroom really levels up when you pair it with a keyboard, because now you can use shortcuts. P will flag a photo, X will reject it, Shift P will flag and advance, and Shift X will reject and advance. So you can just sit here like this with your ring finger on Shift, hitting X with your index finger, and P with the other. And of course, this is the same both for an iPad with a keyboard and a Mac. But if you have a Mac with a touch bar, then you'll find the calling icons there as well. And when I first saw this, I had visions of just sitting here like this, just one hand on the flag and reject buttons, just half paying attention to the screen with a beer in the other hand. But but I can't do that because when you do the, the culling, when you do the culling, I'm not cutting this bit out. When you do the culling, <laughs> 
Darkroom doesn't automatically advance. This is what happens when I don't stick to my script. <laughs> But I can't do it because Darkroom doesn't automatically advance when you call with the touch bar. No, come on Bergen Co. Implement it for me. Touch bar, touch bar calling bear mode. I, I, I don't know. Anyway, in all seriousness, and I'm always very serious, I think, I think Bergen Co. have nailed this update. For people like me who like to have highly efficient, organized and optimized workflows, then this update is spot on and I'm sure a lot of darkroom users will be very happy with it. Thank you very much for watching. Take care, stay curious, and Aussie Buna. Aussie Buna is back. Have a good day. That means have a good day in Romanian. I mean it. Feature that you want that isn't there. It's interesting. Finally, like before, Darkroom really levels up when you compare it, when you compare it with a keyboard, Dave. Comparing Darkroom to a keyboard.